Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, and our beloved congregation, those who are with us in this holy church, and those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray that you are always in good health and in good spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Where is your amen? amen. Can't hear you. Amen. Can't hear you. Amen. That's the way. On this holy and blessed Sunday, we are celebrating this holy mass service, the Holy Eucharist, the true body and true blood of Christ, our King, our Messiah, our Savior, in memory of our beloved, the late, the Patriarch of the ancient Church of the East, His Holiness, Marad Day II, where he has left us from this temporal life into the eternal life, we pray through the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that his pure soul is received into the kingdom and granted that glory at the right hand of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the second coming. May God rest his soul in peace and may God have mercy on his beloved church and we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the source of wisdom, and by the love of God the Father, and by the sacrifice of God the Son revealed in the flesh on the cross Calvary, we pray that the Almighty God choose a faithful and loyal servant of His to lead His flock with purity of heart and with loyalty and faithfulness in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that the Lord chooses another shepherd that is going to fill this gap that now is vacant after 50 years of service. Just very briefly, my beloved, I'd like to say a few words about our beloved delight Mar Adde II, Catholicos Patriarch of the Ancient Church of the East. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. His Holiness, our beloved the late Marad Day II, was born on the 6th of January, 1948, in the city of Nineveh, in Mesopotamia, Beth Nahran, Iraq. He was ordained a deacon and elevated to the rank of, the, of a priest on the 15th of September, 1968. And then afterwards, he was elevated to, a, to the rank of an archbishop or metropolitan for the ancient Church of the East on the 22nd of September, same year, 1968, at St. Zion Church, the Blessed, in the city of Baghdad, the capital city of Iraq. And after the departure of the beloved, His Holiness Martuma Darmo, who was the Patriarch of the ancient Church of the East, Marad Day II was chosen by the Synodical Council to be the head of the church, the patriarch of the church of the ancient church of the East. And he was consecrated to this holy rank as, a, as the patriarch of the ancient church of the East on the 20th of February, 1972. And those who were involved in his ordination, one was the 
our beloved delight, Mar Narsei, the metropolitan of Kirkuk, which is another city in Iraq, and our beloved metropolitan who is still with us, we thank the Lord, and may God grant him a long life, Mar Toma, the metropolitan of Nineveh, um, the, um, another city in Iraq. When His Holiness Maradei II received this holy rank as the head of the church, the patriarch, we saw through the grace of God a great flourishment and expansion of the church. An archdiocese was established in America, in Australia, and in Europe. And after serving the Church of Christ and his flock, after 50 years, His Holiness, our beloved the late Maradei II, was put to rest on the hope of resurrection and eternal life in our Lord Christ Jesus. He passed away on Friday, 11th of February, 2022 in Arizona, uh, the United States of America. May God rest his soul in peace and may God grant him the best portion in the midst of all the saints, all the righteous in his kingdom. Amen. After the Holy Mass service, my beloveds, I would like you to uh, make your way to the church hall for uh, a dinner put together in memory of our beloved, the late Maradde II, Catholicos Patriarch of the ancient Church of the East. Please keep him in your prayers. Pray for his precious soul, that the Lord receives it into his kingdom and into his glory by the intercession of the most powerful advocate, our Holy Mother Mary, and all of the saints and all the angels in heaven and all you faithfuls, my beloved, amen. In the gospel of today from St. Matthew chapter seven, the Lord Jesus was approached by a centurion. A centurion is someone who had hundred soldiers under his authority. He was in the, Ro in the Roman army under the authority of Augustus Caesar the ruler of the world, the most powerful man on earth of his time. He approached the Lord Jesus and said, my son is being tormented. He is a paralytic, paralyzed in bed, and he is tormented very, very badly and heavily. So I beg you, Jesus of Nazareth, to heal my son. The Lord Jesus looked at him and he wanted to make a beautiful example of how a true believer should be. And the Lord deliberately, being God himself revealed in the flesh, knowing the heart, the mind, the soul, and knows every single thought that is in your head and my head before we even comprehend it. He said, show me the way, let's go to your home. He said, Lord, and watch this, he called him Lord, yet he, he had seen him for the first time. He said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to enter my doorstep. For I am a man under authority. And this is the key word, under authority. For I am a man under authority, 
and I have soldiers under me. I say to this, come, and he comes. And I say to the next, go, and he goes. So are you, Lord, with one word from you, I believe my son is healed. The Lord looks at him in astonishment. Not that he does not know what this man is all about. But he was astonished, saying, why isn't my own people like this pagan man? Shouldn't the Israelite be the leading example of, the, of humanity? Wasn't God revealed to them from the very beginning? Didn't God choose prophets and send them all to the Israelite nation? Wasn't my word given to this nation? They should have been the ultimate example to the rest of the world. Yet so sadly, this pagan man puts the entire Israelite nation to shame. Lord, for I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under my authority. I say to whomever I wish, and they do as I say. Say a word, Lord, my son, I believe is healed. The Lord looks at the people who were following him and said to them, truly I say to you, not even in all of Israel I have seen as such faith as this centurion, a Roman citizen, a Roman person, a pagan to the Israelite nation. Someone who worships a false god has surpassed you whom you claim to be the worshippers of the true divine God, this Roman pagan worshipper has put you all to shame. For I am a man under authority. Wow. Amazing. The Lord Jesus was astonished by this word, I am a man under authority. What was he saying to the Lord? He was saying to the Lord Jesus the following. He was saying, Lord, my word has value. My word has a caliber to it. My word has power. My word has authority for as long as I am under the authority of Caesar, the king. For as long as I am under the authority of Augustus Caesar, whatever I say, everyone will adhere to what I say. The day that comes, I come out of the authority of Caesar. Whatever I say, no one will ever pay attention to what I say. Any premier, any prime minister, the moment they leave that position, they become just like any other citizen of this beloved and blessed country of ours, Australia. But as long as they are in that position, they say something, the police force listen to them, the army listens to them, whether they are right or wrong. But imagine the prime minister leaves his prime ministerial position and says to the police force, go to Canberra and stop the protesters coming to Canberra. No one is gonna give one penny. 
for he is no longer under authority. For as long as I am under authority, the authority of Augustus Caesar, whatever I say to my soldiers, they adhere to it. But you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord, you are under the authority of God himself, not Caesar. If Augustus Caesar can give an order and say to this soldier, go and kill yourself for your country, and that soldier will listen. But can Augustus Caesar raise this soldier who was killed from the dead? No, he has no power, no authority to raise the dead. But you, Jesus, you are under the authority of the Almighty God who has the authority to even raise the dead, not only heal the sick. So I'm asking you, say a word. Just like I say a word, and I'm under the authority of Augustus Caesar, my word is granted, how much more your word will be granted since you are under the authority of the Almighty God, the creator of everything that is visible and invisible, the miracle doer and the wanderer of all wonders. Say a word, my son will be healed. Under authority. So vital for us to be under authority with all love and respect. Please don't get me wrong. With all love and respect for someone to claim to be a Christian and do not wish to be under the authority, they cannot follow in the footprints of Christ. The Lord Jesus placed authority in his church. The Lord Jesus established ecclesiastical order in his church. There is the deacon, there is the priest, there is the bishop, there is the archbishop or a cardinal, and there is the pope or the patriarch. These are authorities. I'm not talking here about whether these people will abuse that authority or not, but I'm saying Christ himself, he wished it to be this way. There has to be authority in the church, otherwise God will not listen to our prayers. Those who come, and deny all these authorities and say that I have Jesus and Jesus is the only one. I'll carry the Holy Bible and I'll follow Jesus. I am the leader of myself. I'll preach, I'll do whatever I wish and I am the head of the church and I bring some people with me and a small group and call ourselves a church like so many do. Who is above you? My dear friend, are you going to tell me that Christ is above you? Who do you think you are? You are missing something so profoundly important in your Christian and spiritual faith called humility. You are lacking humility when you do not wish to adhere to a hierarchical position above you. And since you lack humility, 100% you lack obedience. And a disobedient soul can never get to Christ. Impossible. A disobedient soul will never see the face of Christ. Nowadays, 
they think it's fun or it is, it is allowed for me to grab the Bible and start preaching and call myself a preacher and bring some people and we make a church on our own without someone above you. Do you see the mess we got ourselves into? Oh my goodness. Until when people are going to remain blind? Until when people are going to remain ignorant? I just wonder. I just wonder. I just wonder. The Lord Jesus chose 12 apostles himself while he was on earth. And while he was on earth, he chose another 70 disciples. If you don't know this, read the Gospel of Luke chapter 10. The Lord Jesus chose another 70. Who chose the 12? Christ. Who chose the 70? Christ. Who are the 12 patriarchs, head of the church? Who are the 70? Cardinals, archbishops. A rank below the 12. They are not the same. The Lord loves them equally, but as far as their roles, their positions, they are not the same. The 12 are the 12 and the 70 are 70. The 70 cannot come and say, there is no difference between me and Peter and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew. No, my dear friend, there is. For Christ chose Peter before you. He wants to say there has to be an authority that you need to be submissive to, otherwise you are not my disciple. Peter comes to me and Mary goes to Peter, not to Christ. In this I show true love and true humility to the Lord. When I say there is someone above me. With all love and respect, in the Protestant branch of Christendom, authority is missing. With all love and respect, authority is missing. Because each one is ahead on their own. Cannot happen. This is not the way Christ wants his church to operate. Impossible. That's why there are so many thousands of branches. You know why? Because since everyone is using their head, well, there is no one head the same as the other. That's why they will never come into unity. Each to their own and each interprets the Bible their own way and claiming it's the Holy Spirit revealing to them. My goodness, my goodness. So blind this world is. When you go back to history, which history cannot neither be changed nor wiped, you will see that there has been succession of church leaders one after the other and authority was never missing in the entire history of the apostolic church, never. The deacon reports to the priest, the priest to the bishop, the bishop to the archbishop, the archbishop to the pope or the patriarch. When we follow what Christ has established on earth, everything will be running smoothly. But the problem, the problem is that some come and say, the Pope is not doing the right thing, therefore we are gonna deny the church and go and establish our own church. This is against the Lord's wish. 
If the Pope is doing the wrong thing, he is a human being. He is susceptible to making mistakes every single day of his life. He is nothing but a weak instrument. But the church is holy. The church is established and founded by Christ himself, built on the blood of Christ himself. And when I say the Pope, guys, I'm, I don't mean Rome, okay? I'm talking about every church leader, whether they are Catholic or Orthodox, with no differentiation. So when, when the head of the church is not serving the Lord faithfully, that doesn't mean that the church is not holy. He is not, but the church is, for the church is the body of Christ, and it was established on Calvary by his own precious blood. The day the Holy Church loses track of authority, the church loses track of Christ. Little children sitting in the street cannot run and protect the flock of Christ. Oh my goodness. The enemy is playing with us so badly. The enemy is playing with us so badly. For I am a man under authority. I am not a rebellious. I have not gone against Caesar, but I am under his authority. For as long as I am under Caesar's authority, my word has power and is done, fulfilled. Here we come and we ask this question. What was the Lord Jesus secret? And by saying secret, I mean, what made, what gave Jesus, our Lord, that strength, that power to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to do all kind of wonders and miracles. Everything the Lord said, it was done on the spot. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus rose from the dead. The crippled get up on the spot, the blind see on the spot, the paralytic, the, uh, the, lep the, the leprosy, the lepers, all kind, the demented people, Satan was burned on the spot. What was the Lord's secret? One thing, he always, while on earth, in the flesh, as the Son of Man, he always, put himself under the authority of his heavenly father. He never walked away from that authority. He never said, I can do whatever I want. People came to him and said, Lord, Lord. He said, why are you calling me Lord, Lord? It is not who says Lord, Lord enters the kingdom of heaven, but it is he who does the will of my father. For as long as you are under the authority of my heavenly father, the things I do, you will do. The reason why our prayers are not heard so many times, because we are not always under the authority of God. We do things our way, not His. That's why when we pray, our prayers are not heard. But Christ Jesus, the man, the perfect man, every single moment of his life was under the authority of God the Father. That's why wherever he said, God the Father said. And when God speaks, the dead are raised, the sick are healed, the demented are all cast out and brought to wholesomeness, and every single miracle is made possible when we are under the authority of God. And God put on the flesh,
came, established his church, and put in his church authorities. You're, you're not just free on your own. Say whatever you want and do whatever you want. A child that is disobedient will only regret it at the end. When children take themselves out of the authority of their parents, you tell me where do they end up? In a lot of trouble. That is guaranteed. You don't need to think about it. You don't need to go and find out if you're going to get into trouble or not. The day you disobey your parents, you're in trouble. Every son, every daughter that walked away saying that I am free, it's a free country, and the secular government, this 21st century, the evil century, they will come and encourage every teenager and say to them, you don't need to be with your parents. The government will support you. We will pay you a play. We'll give you a place. Leave. Don't let mom and dad to tell you what to do, what to say, and how to live. You are a mature person. And nowadays, even an 11, 12-year-old is mature enough to decide to put poison in them or not without the parents' consent. Shame on such governments. Say shame on such educational systems. Shame on you. You evildoers. Shame on you. How dare you teach little kids to be disobedient to parents? You know who does that? 100% Satan. You are the children of Satan. The children of Satan. The children of Satan. It was Satan from the very beginning came to destroy family bond family values and family morals and ethics and Satan is coming back again into the Garden of Eden to destroy this family one more time people wake up open your eyes and see it is so clear humanity has chosen of the 21st century Humanity of the 21st century has chosen to be outside the authority of the Almighty God. They chose to be godless. They chose to be godless. Look where this has led you to. You have became, you have become slaves. Slaves, slaves. I pray from the bottom of my heart, I pray for every rally, for every protest that there has been, protest that has been happening in the world and in Australia. I pray that we are not only going seeking our freedom, because if we are seeking the freedom we used to enjoy before, doing what we wish, saying what we want, uh, dressing up in whichever way we want, go wherever we wish, eat, drink as we please. If you are seeking this freedom, well, my beloved, this very freedom was the reason that got you into this slavery. If you are seeking freedom in the sense to be free doing things as you please, well, this freedom that you enjoyed before got you into this mess. I beg you, seek God, because in God alone there is freedom. And this God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only. And believe me, believe me, believe me, do not waste your time, do not waste your breath, 
seeking another one, thinking that another one exists outside of Jesus Christ, because there isn't. There isn't. This is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for he is God revealed in the flesh. My beloved, there is no freedom for no human being until we come and be under the authority of God. There is no freedom. You walk away from God seeking freedom, you become a slave to Satan and evilness. Look at the world, morally corrupt. Actually, it is morally not only corrupt but bankrupt. Do you think when a war takes place in any part of the world, do you think that it was that president or that leader of that country chose to make war if the Lord has not permitted? The Lord Jesus is not going to come to every individual person and say, Mr. Putin, go and fight. No. But the Lord has his own ways on how to move every single leader. Because in the book of Revelation says very clearly that Jesus Christ is the head of every king of the world. Of every leader of every nation, Jesus Christ is the head. He rules over every leader. The Lord Jesus rules over Scott Morrison. The Lord Jesus rules over Joe Biden. The Lord Jesus rules over Mr. Putin. The Lord Jesus rules over every leader, whether they are Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, atheists, the Lord rules over them. This is the truth. I just wonder, how are we living for war to come into our country? It would be impossible, impossible for a nation that worship the Lord Jesus for the Lord to allow war to enter that country. The Lord will protect that nation, but it shows how much as Christians we are for Jesus Christ. We have denied the Lord. We are Christian by name, not by deeds, 100%. 100%. The Lord Jesus would not have allowed Mr. Putin to go into Ukraine if the Lord was happy with so-called Christian nations. No one is more merciful than the Lord. No one is more kind than the Lord. No one is more caring than the Lord Jesus. It is impossible for the Lord to come and hurt us if we did not hurt him so much as Christians. America, Europe, the leaders, oh my God, oh my God, amen. The European leaders, <laughs> they are condemning what Russia has done to Ukraine. And by the way, I'm not talking about politics is not my, my cup of tea. I will never go there, but please pay attention. The European leaders and the whole world is condemning Mr. Putin. How dare you? You go into Ukraine and fight there, yet there was nothing provoking this war. Excuse-moi. You European leaders, you need to be quiet and shut your mouths. You know why? 
because shame on you that once upon a time in the entire European world were based and founded on Christian principle and values. Today, you have denied Jesus Christ. So don't ever talk about democracy. Don't ever talk about human rights. How dare you? You have denied Jesus. So you be quiet and shut your mouths. Canada, shame on such government leaders to come and claim that they are no longer Christian but a secular atheistic leadership. Shame on you for denying Jesus. You are nothing but the sons of the snake. America, every single law that they have introduced in recent times has offended the Messiah. They started with George Washington as the president. Look what they ended up with. Oh, oh. I'm not judging. But you know what? The people of America deserve someone like the current president. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. You deserve it. You asked for it. Because when you, as a Christian nation, have come into denial of Jesus Christ, the Lord will put someone to make fun of you. Fun of you. A little puppet running the show. Because that's what you people deserve. You know, I'll say this. I do not wish for war to happen in no nation. I pray for Ukraine. I pray for the people of Ukraine. And I pray for the people of, of Russia. I'm sure on both sides, there are people that disagree with wars and across the whole global spectrum, they are in denial of any wars. But fairness is fairness. When we do evil in the sight of God, war will devour us. Do not be angry. I pray for everyone. But one thing I like about President Putin, I pray for him. I actually remembered him in the, in the prayer, in the liturgy. Him, Joe Biden, the president of Ukraine, we pray for all of them. But one thing I like about Mr. Putin, this has got nothing to do with me agreeing or disagreeing with him. I leave that to myself. This is a personal opinion. But one thing I like about him, he is a man. Whether he's right or wrong, he's a man. You know what we're missing in leadership? Real men. They say and do. Today, they're just puppets. Jump up and down and act. Don't act. Be a man. Be a man. But I pray, Mr. Putin, you take back your army and let peace be bestowed upon your nation and the Ukraine. But I'm not going to say in the name of democracy, stop lying. You end, stop lying. Democracy? Where was democracy with the so-called pandemic? Where was human rights with the so-called mandates forcing people to put poison in their body against their wish and against their will? So don't you ever speak about human rights. You should be ashamed of yourself to speak about democracy and human rights because you are the first one in breach of it. 
So now all of a sudden, Mr. Putin has broken every law of human rights. Wow, we're lost, we're cowards. The whole world is lying and they speak about democracy. Now I just, can someone please come and explain to me how does that work? For I am a man under authority. The world has lost that authority. That's why leaders are acting like little kids. Every five minutes, they come up with a different <laughs> idea. They forget what they said three months ago, six months ago, one year ago, they forget. Is the mask off now? <laughs> Good. <laughs> the weather has been kind of crazy lately. I just hope, <laughs> I, they, I just hope it's not one of those, another lie, <laughs> and they'll say, oh, well, you see, we've been telling you all these years, it is global warming. The iceberg is melting, brother. The oceans is rising and all the islands are going to be underwater submerged and one of those islands and it's a big one called Australia. So people, we need to do another lockdown so you don't use too much car fumes and you can't breathe too much, so we're going to give you a cylinder, put it in your mouth, and you stay in your room. No more electricity. The 5G will do it. And Mr. What's his name? Ah, oh, Billy Boy, Bill Gates. Yes. He will send you all the artificial meat and the chicken that he is raising with his uh, beautiful friend called George Soros, who is about to die. What a shame. Do these people really think they can run the whole world? You will remember this. Just wait and see what the Lord has of a surprise for all of these secret societies. Just wait. The Lord will squeeze them so hard, it has never happened in the history of the entire human race. To prove one thing, there is only one God in heaven, the creator of everything that is visible and invisible. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To prove this, that Jesus is God, no one else is. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So um, when they come and say it's a global warming, you see the weather is changing. <laughs> yeah. There is somebody somewhere here in Australia has got a big fan. <laughs> and he's linked something to that big fan and he's making artificial clouds. Oh, they've done it in Dubai. They've done it in Saudi Arabia. They've done it in places where rain doesn't exist. They made those places flood. And the poor people there, they said, Allahu Akbar, it's a miracle. It's not, it's, it's uh, Bill Gates. It's not Allahu Akbar. It's Bill Gates. Oh, now Elon Musk, a piece of advice, give up on your little, little, little game that you are playing. 
You may look sane before the world, but I know what you are. I know what you are, my dear Elon Musk. I'm praying for you. You know what? If you do not stop what you're doing, you'll have to answer to Jesus Christ, and I can assure you, whether you believe in him or not, you know what? Everyone will know who Jesus Christ is sooner or later. Stop playing with this so-called AI, artificial intelligence, and you're trying to bring artificial intelligence and replace it with the human dignity. Just to prove what? That you have got, you've got money and you can do whatever you want. And you can go up and build a, a palace for yourself in Mars. These people are sick in the head. They're sick. Anyone, anyone who tries to destroy humanity is sick. Anyone who tries to kill humanity is sick. Anyone, anyone. Come back to Jesus. The love of my life. My sweetheart. The one who gives me a hard time. The one who gets on my nerves. The one who says, carry my cross and follow me. I love him. I love him. I love this man. He knows it. Whether I say it or not, he knows it. Whether I'm happy or angry with him, he knows it. Whether I'm hurt or comforted by him, he knows it. His name is Jesus, the one and only. I pray, Lord, the entire world come back to you. The entire world come to this realization there is only one creator and his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. We pray for the unity of the church. We pray for the Lord Jesus, the only good shepherd to touch the heart of every church leader. Humble them all, Lord. Make their heads come down for your head to be seen before the entire world. Bring them from their high, high horses and bring them into humility. Let them be true, humble servants for you, Lord. Warriors for your name, not cowards, but warriors for your name, Lord Jesus. Stand up for the truth. Speak the truth with a loud voice that will shake the entire world from its foundation. We pray, we pray for the unity of the church and for the tranquility of the world. We pray, my beloved.